You've implemented a ban on electronic devices, some electronic devices on commercial airliners going on some routes, leaving from some cities. And you've talked about the possibility of expanding that. Where might you and what might the timeline be for, for doing that? Well, it could be everywhere, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, the, the threat is real. There are any number of uh, cells out there that are doing their very best to figure out ways to beat our security. When I say our security, I mean our security as well as every airport in the, in the world. Uh, the United States still has the best security in the world. It's the hardest target to get to, but it's also the target that they want to get to the most. Mm. Uh, so when I was briefed on some very serious intel, intelligence, about a very serious threat, uh, and we focused on a part of the world where that threat was most likely to come from, uh, I made a decision to, uh, to uh, inconvenience people so they are now no longer able to read their Kindles. They might have to actually buy a book or a magazine or talk to their kids uh. or doze. But the fact is their lives are more important to me than this small amount of inconvenience. But I can tell you, David, the threat is real. Mm. And this thing could expand. Uh, and I'm looking at it three, four, five, six times a day. It is the thing that keeps me awake at night. How about the visa waiver program? You said you're looking at that as well. In looking at that, are you thinking about ending that particular program? I'm certainly not thinking about ending it. Mm. But uh, one of the threats to uh, our European partners is there's a large number of their citizens, uh, born and raised in many cases in their countries, that are uh, fighting in the caliphate now. Uh, and as the caliphate is reduced uh, by the coalition led by the United States, uh, many of those fighters are leaving the caliphate, making their way back to Western Europe. Western Europe, the visa waiver program, probably most of the viewers don't know this, but is, a, is a, an arrangement with our closest friends and allies that have the best databases and the best way to identify people as to who they are, you know, really good passports and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and pretty, uh, pretty easy simply to get on an airplane and go, come to the United States. The concern is we have thousands of returned fighters, or certainly hundreds of returned fighters, that could relatively easily jump on an airplane uh, because they're visa waiver countries and they're citizens of those countries and travel to the United States. So we're looking hard at uh, how the Europeans are tracking uh, individuals. Uh, many of these individuals, as I said, don't, they don't know that they left Europe, the U European Union, mm. to go fight in the caliphate. Uh, so we're looking at that. Once again, focused entirely on protecting the flying public, not just Americans, but all human beings that get on an airplane in Europe or anywhere uh, to go to any location, not just the United States. This is serious business. You mentioned you were in the Marine Corps for 45 years. Uh, now you're sitting in the White House, you're a cabinet secretary. Uh, what has surprised you most about making that transition? Do you look at government differently than you did before? Yeah, now that I'm part of the government, uh, I don't criticize it quite so much. Um, it is a, an entirely different experience. Different people, good people, but very, very different. Um, you, didn't, you never worried too much, even as a four-star general, mm -hmm. never worried very much about politics. You just ignored it. Didn't worry too much about politicians, just ignored it. It was just noise, background noise. Um, we were talking, uh, you and I, a little earlier, uh, the press, um, very different on the defense side than on, say, the uh, domestic mm -hmm. side. Uh, in their defense, uh, they didn't have someone that had an attitude towards the press like I do, and that is outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to create uh, a core of individuals who, you know, you, you never really like the story they're going to write, otherwise it's, you know, it's not news. But uh, I, I'm committed to making sure that reporters have access to the information that we can provide so that at least they can write, uh, you know, an accurate story as opposed to something that's, you know, based on conjecture and maybe some, some uh, pre, uh, pre-decisional draft mm. copies of some uh, document that uh, probably would never have been signed. 